In this lesson, we will talk about some of the scenarios of multiple linear regression, and then we'll focus on the idea of dummy variables. So for scenarios in multiple linear regression, we can have polynomial regression, which is something like this quadratic model. Um, sometimes people don't think this is a linear model because they see this square right here. But remember, when we say linear model, linear is in terms of the beta where this square is on the x, okay? Um, we can also have scenarios with multiple variable models. So here is one variable one and one variable two. This is similar, this is very common and similar to our fish catch example that we saw in our previous lessons. We can also have grouping variable variables or categorical variables that we put into our analysis. So in this case, um, x2 is going to be our dummy variable or indicator variable, where it's going to take on the value of one or zero, depending on the group. And we will talk a little bit more about this and what these look like in a moment. So let's first talk about polynomial regression. Here, we have two examples um, where this one is a simple linear regression, and then we have a quadratic on the right. Um, the blue dots are our data. Um, they're the same for both pictures, but we're fitting different regressions. Uh, note that again, the quadratic polynomial regression is still considered linear, um, and the curvature is coming from the fact that we are squaring our x's. We can also look at something that looks like a first order multivariable um, model, where we have, again, multiple covariates. So we would have maybe covariate x1 on this x-axis, and then x2 on this x-axis, and then we would have our response on kind of the dimension coming out of the page. And so in this case, we're no longer just fitting a line. Um, in this case here, we're kind of fitting a line. Now we would be fitting planes um, because we have that extra dimension. Unfortunately, I can't draw higher than this 3D dimension where we have x1, x2, and our y. Um, it would be cool if I could, but I can't. So that's why we're only using this. Another type of model we would be doing would be a second ordered. So what that looks like is here where we're going to have interaction terms. We have an interaction term there, and we have a quadratic term. So we're adding more variables and parameters. And this is going to allow us to fit surfaces that kind of look have different shapes than just a plane. We start to see that there's a curvature here. Again, in this case, this is a non-additive in X1 and X2, that is the model is going to contain an interaction term. The point of this lesson is to kind of look at different scenarios or the types of data we might encounter when we're doing research with multiple linear regressions, where again, linear is in terms of the parameter and not our X's. Um, so the next case I kind of want to like look over is regression with a grouping variable. Um, where we're going to first talk about if the groups have different slopes. So in this scenario, our x2 is considered what we call a dummy variable. And this is going to tell us if this ith observation is in group 1 or group 2 or to fit with our picture, group zero, group one. Uh, labels are very arbitrary anyway. So this model sets us up to allow ha to have two different intercepts for the two different groups, but we're assuming the slope is the same. So for group zero or one, the intercept is right here. But for group two or group one, this plot, um, our intercept is right here, this purple dot, where group two, group one is the open circles, and zero are the colored dark 
circles. All right. Um, this is an additive model in one and two, and it doesn't contain an interaction term. So to put this a little bit more concrete, um, if x1 or x12, let me repeat that. If xi2 is zero, this is going to get canceled out, and we're left going to be left with beta naught, beta one, um, xi one, and epsilon. But if this is, if these x is one, would be left with beta naught plus beta two for our intercept. And that's what this right here is demonstrating: is that if x one is xi two is one, we're going to have this as our intercept. But if we're at zero, then we're going to have this intercept. Another way we could have another thing that could happen is that we include the interaction term, which is then going to allow us to have different intercepts and different slopes. So now we have this interaction term here. So if we were look to look at these two pictures, our intercepts are different. And then we can also notice that the slopes of these lines are also different. And how that's coming into play is if we look at our little formula here, if x i2 is 0, so we come back up here, this is 0, then this would be 0. So we'd be left with just our beta naught beta 1. In group 2, if which tells us that x um, i2 is 1, we would then include this beta 2 term, and we would include beta 3 x i 1. And so we would be left. I'll fix this, beta plus beta 2. Um, we'd be left with this, where we have our intercept here, our slope here. So quick summary of the dummy variables and grouping variables. A grouping variable with two levels can be represented by one dummy variable. OK, so in our fish example, um, public access or not. If we have a grouping variable with k levels, then we need k minus one dummy variables to address it. So let's say that our public access had three levels, not accessible, partially accessible, and then completely accessible. We would need two dummy variables, x1 and x2. So maybe x1, if it's one, it's not accessible, if x2 is 1, then it's partially accessible. And then if both of them are 0, then it's completely accessible. So that kind of just wraps up us looking at kind of some different scenarios that we could encounter and look into. If you are interested or your research does contain a lot of dummy variables, um, in this class, we won't talk too much about them, but I would recommend looking into another class. I believe it would be stat 5214G that goes more into grouping variables.